Let's talk to Connor Campbell. He's a financial analyst at Spreadex. Very good morning good to you, morning. Connor. Good morning. Right, we've got three stocks to cover now. Let's kick off with the first one, Glaxo, down 3% um, at the time of writing in 2018. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's not in a good few months, Glaxo, really. If you look back, you can see the, the brunt of its recent decline came uh, at the end of October. That was when it released its third quarter figures. The figures themselves were pretty decent. I think uh, sales were up 4% to 7.8 billion. Uh, uh, I think it was adjusted pre-tax profit was up 7% to 2.3 billion. Those figures were slightly better than expected. It's sort of new uh, HIV and meningitis and lung, I guess, illness drugs. Uh, you know, they're doing quite well. However, there are issues with, I think it's Advar, you know, for a long time Glaxo's shining, started the jewel in the crown of Glaxo's drug line, uh, you know, that should have uh, generic competitors. It's only not seen a greater fall in sales because its competitors have found it difficult to get a generic product out there on the market. I think a few times in the last year and a half, uh, its competitors have sort of been rebuffed and the product hasn't met met standards. However, that is looming. That is always out there. You've already seen a pullback in Advar sales, and that is only going to increase in the coming months. Also, it seemed like the main issue from investors' point of view was that it's got a new CEO, I think it's Emma Walmsley, and she said comments to the effect that they might look at buying Pfizer's uh, consumer drugs uh, division. I think that includes things like chapstick and, and products like that, you know, popular supermarket drug products. Um, and that, the cost of that, I think it'd be potentially $16 billion, would, I think investors feared, would come from, from Glaxo's dividend, which up until 2018 had been protected, I think, at 80p per share per year. Um, so I think that drop stemmed from that, the fear that the dividend might disappear if Glaxo do go after the Pfizer's consumer drugs uh, division. I think that is really going to be what, what drives trading on, on Wednesdays. It's full year figures on Wednesday. The figures themselves are likely to be okay. I think it is going to be down to uh, any more comments along the lines of buying that consumer division. And if, if so, is that dividend going to take a hit? I think if the dividend doesn't take a hit, then there's every chance that it bounces back towards... 1325, 1350 in the next few weeks because that will delay some of investors' fears. And I think that's what our clients are sort of basing their trading on. We've seen buyers start to creep in around £13, and when it was at 1350, we saw buyers around there as well. And I think they're looking for the preservation of that dividend being a uh, boost in the short term for clients. Understood. Time. Okay, so let's move on to the next company, Sophos Group, um, up 9% at the time of writing in 2018. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, up 9% in 2018. I think it rose 121% across 2017. It's a cyber security company, basically. It does a few other things, but cyber security is really why it's been driven higher. Right. I think some of its clients include uh, Pixar, Ford, and the NHS. So obviously, we saw 2017 littered with cyber attacks. They're only going to grow in frequency in the coming years. It's a company well positioned to benefit from the shift in, uh, even, you know, you know, uh, nation on nation attacks you know likely will take some kind of cyber route in the next few years and decades and Sophos is well positioned to benefit from that in terms of its figures I think it's half year figures back in November revenue was up 16% to 298.1 billion uh, million dollars uh, billings were up 300 uh, 21% to 345.1 million. I think that sort of the real highlight was that for the second time this financial year, it uh, raised its full year forecast for billings from like mid to high teens to 21 to 22%. Investors were very happy with that, sent it a bit higher. I think it, there was a pullback in December, that's because, or the end of November, sorry, because I think it's APAX, private fund pulled their, uh, you know, sold their 11% stake. But, you know, since then, it's, it's easily recovered those figures. I think the one thing to watch out for with its, uh, I think it's its third quarter figures on Thursday, is that it's targeting 19% revenue growth for the full year. So obviously, it's half year figures at 16%, while impressive, 3% short of what its full year target is. So I think investors will be looking for the company to, to get up to that 19% in the third quarter and have a really strong second half of the year to meet its full year targets. From our client's perspective, heavily buying around that 650, 640 mark. I think it's a, term, a stock that they're looking at long term and it is well positioned to benefit. And there's no reason why it can't have a similarly strong year on the market, at least, as it did in 2017, especially, you know, it's the kind of stock that's likely going to jump every time there is news of a, of a cyber attack, even yep. if it is not directly involved. involved. So just from, from that kind of news cycle perspective as well, it, it looks to benefit into 2018. Okay, let's wrap up with Thomas Cook Group, um, up 2.5% in 2018. 
Um, what are the thoughts? Yeah, in January, uh, at the peak in January, it was at two and a half year highs. And a very decent 2017, obviously, in the, has to be put in the context of the woeful run it had before yeah. that. But is on, on, is on the up and up. Is, you know, uh, a lot of the key issues that were plaguing Thomas Cook seem to have calmed down somewhat. It's first quarter fig, uh, it's full year figures in November, sorry. There was a lot of good in there. I think right for like revenue, group revenue was up 9%, which is very healthy for a stock that was in, you know, really struggling with that a few years ago. Pre-tax profits were up 12% to 46 million. However, uh, I think margins were down, group margins were down 1.3%. That was due to a mixture of impact of Hurricane Irma on things like Caribbean holidays and its UK division. The UK division was really, you can sort of see there's a lot of movement in the sort of the middle of November there. And that gap downwards was... was based on this full year report and largely based on the troubles with the UK division. I think in the UK division, it was a 40% drop in underlying profits to 52 million for a myriad, myriad reasons caused, I think, the weaker pound. Even stuff like costly, like costly fraudulent illness claims uh, were really hitting Thomas Cook. You had uh, rising hotel prices. And I think the, the real crux of the issue was a turn away from Mediterranean holidays due to political unrest in certain com uh, countries towards Spain. And Spain is obviously such an ultra-competitive market. Margins really low due to the, sort of the price war that exists between, um, you know, Thomas Cook and TUI and companies like that battling over that Spanish holiday market. You know, it's, it, you know UK holiday makers, Spain is sort of the immediate choice, really. Yeah. So there, is, there isn't a lot of room for revenue growth in that area. And I think that really hurt Thomas Cook in, in the second half of two, its financial 2017. However, it did say demand was picking up for places like Turkey and Greece and Cyprus. And if, if in its first quarter figures on Thursday it can uh, continue to show demand for those countries, any shift away from Spain is going to be seen as a positive because it gives more room for Thomas Cook to get its numbers up, basically. Beyond that, I think its figures are very strong. Like you said, you know, full-year revenue growth was 9%. If it can post similar kinds of figures you know, update on its summer bookings and hopefully move away from Spain. There's no reason why it can't bounce back towards uh, uh, £1.27, £1.275. And our clients buying around those 124 just under 125 levels. I think Thomas Cook has done a good job at coming out of a crisis and surviving the other side and doing well and posting growth. So I think our clients are looking for just, you know, a, a generically positive update on Thursday should keep it at the very least at these current levels. At these levels. Colin, as always, thank you very much. Thanks indeed. very much.